We're here at the Hahnemühle booth uh, at the wonderful Drupa Fair in Düsseldorf, the Druckenpapier, which means print and paper fair, finally taking place after eight years of pause. It is a delight to be here with the two icon by my side, Gerhard Steidl. You are really a big name, a renowned over many decades, you have become an icon, really, in what you do in publishing and superb quality photo book printing. It is an honor to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Jan Wölfle, the CEO of Hannemüller, you've organized this. Thank you for organizing this. And um, I've seen you just now conversing, and I'm sorry to have interrupted you, but I'm going to try and let you guys get right back into the. That's perfect. Today. I also would like to thank you very much, Mr. Steidel, for making the time to come to our booth. Where very nice and very honored to have you here. Also for Danny for doing the talk. Yes, Sorry. it is my great pleasure and I'm very excited and I'll tell you why in a minute. You have been in the publishing and book printing industry and really established yourself as a big name because it is your passion. I love the story of you as a, as a teenager wanting to be a photographer and then saying, Huh, I don't like these results. They could be better. Let the photographers do their job. I'm going to make the pictures of the photographers look the best they can. And that's how you came to be a publisher. Is that the story? Yeah, that's the story. Uh, actually, you know, if you are young, you are dreaming to be the best in something. And uh, for me, uh, photography was really my passion. And um, then I was looking with the age of 16 to Cartier Bresson and Robert Frank and to the big guys. and. I said to myself, I will never be as good as they are and uh, I do not want to jump once into my grave and being a third class photographer. And then I found out uh, that I have another passion and that's printing. And uh, I started with uh, serigraphy, etching, lithographs and uh, in 1970 I started with offset printing and uh, self-educated and uh, self -educated. now... Um, as there are not too many uh, left in the business of uh, uh. fine art printing for books and especially photo books, uh, we are simply the number one in the world. Number one in the world. Working also with Hannemüller, I know you are world, world leading with some of the fine art papers. So what a bliss to sit here beside you. Thank you so much. I know you've worked with many, many great names, really. People artists they just appreciate the passion the quality the time everything goes through your hands from a to z it's got your thumbprint basically on it you work with great names like robert frank uh, robert adams Gunther grass which you even own the world rights of his archives so that is impressive and that confirms the trust and the, the basis of how much trust you work together with for many years David Bailey, I know as well, I've worked with legendary celebrity photographer Martin Schoeller. We have a book also here that he's done with you. But one name, and that also kind of connects us, is and that name, may he rest in peace, Karl Langfeld. He had really been part of your life intensively for 25 years, starting in the 90s, 93, 94. And that is when I used to walk his shows in Rue Cambon for Chanel with him as a creative art director and all over the world. So this is the part that gets me excited because you've worked with him on a daily basis or what comes to mind? I, um, I started to work with him in 1993 and in 1994 we did his first book uh, with the title um, Off the Record. Actually, uh, it is not outdated at all when I look at it today. Uh, could be reprinted and it would be sensational, very fresh, all in his photography. And uh, throughout the years, um, we have done approximately 140 books of his own photography and uh, 300 uh, photo books for Chanel, 200 photo books for Fendi and for other brands. And uh, yeah. The work with him was beginning uh, quite early, so uh, he was sending faxes in the old days with instructions. And then we had in the early morning at uh, 7 o'clock a chat of uh, what is in the 
cinemas, uh, what are the movies of this week, and uh, what about literature, what are you reading, and uh, can I suggest something to you, uh, talking about exhibitions, and then at the end we were coming to the point of work. And um, he was a fa paper free. Yeah. And the work with him was always beginning uh, that I made test prints for him on various papers and in various technologies. Let's say if it was black and white photo photography, um, um, I provided to him always uncoated papers yeah, uh, and uh, printed in uh, tritone or uh, quadrotone. And uh, when it was four color, uh, we had an extra hit of black uh, uh -huh. to make it really deep. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the reason for uh, uncoated paper uh, has always been uh, the fact that uh, uncoated paper is very close from the surface uh, to, Fabric. to fabrics. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and also the smell and okay. uh, uh, how it Tactile, smiles to, tactile, yeah. to your fingers when you touch it. Yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah the, uh, that was the, the basic of our work. And uh, he was always asking, what kind of paper is it? Uh, uh, where has it been produced? And uh, are there different colors to get? And when he was traveling, he brought always from Japan and uh, from the US and wherever uh, paper swatches. Uh, home to me, and I had uh, to research it. So uh, two paper freaks uh, working together. Oh, blessing! What a beautiful collaboration made in heaven. Uh, may you rest in peace. Really, it's just I get goosebumps, and I, I can somehow I can feel a bit of Carl in your aura because you've you've worked so closely. It's just incredible. I get very excited. Wow. So um, I can only imagine the stories and, and the pictures you have in your mind when you, you know, just let the old days pass by and, and, and dream. I mean, you also founded two um, publishing houses together, right? Yeah, three. Uh, three. One publishing house had the name um, Edition ZL. Uh, that was a publishing house uh, for photography books, visual books. Uh, then uh, later on, uh, we had a publishing house with the name LSD. Uh, that stands for Lagerfeld Steidel Druckerei and Verlag. Right. So that was his uh, creation as well. And then there was a special uh, publishing house just for poetry books, yeah, uh, which has uh, uh, the name, which had the name Lagerfeld. Oh. And um, but with his death, uh, it was coming to an end. Um, but um, you know, the the formula I developed for him and all the productions uh, for the fashion brands uh, mm -hmm. is uh, up to today still the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the beginning I'm speaking with the creative persons of the fashion brands uh, about their idea. We look to the new collection and then it is translated on paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I select always special papers which are made especially for us, mm -hmm. uh, for the certain product uh, uh, with certain colorings, uh, uh, certain volume, certain surface. Then we are doing test prints all in-house, you know, so we have nothing to source out. So from the design, image working, uh, uh, up to the printing process, uh, we have everything under one roof. And that is a formula which leads uh, into very satisfying uh, products because by today you can say um, if you go uh, oh, by today you can say if you have something to you want to tell to others with visual matters with photography uh, the normal way is to have it um, uh, on the website and uh, you find it in the internet but when you go on press and more and more uh, uh, people who have to decide how they advertise their products go back on paper. Yes. Yeah? Uh, because uh, when you sit all day in front of your screen and looking to this and that, when you are at home, and uh, you, 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 that's a prime time. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you want to, to deal with something different, and that's paper. Yeah? Read on paper, look at paper, and so on. And, um, uh, but um, the key uh, for printed matters of this high quality is uh, really 
experience, uh, uh, I call it a library of uh, papers which are not commercial, which are quite expensive. Yes. Our, our products, our books are expensive, more expensive than with others, uh, but we are using better materials. Yeah. You can compare it with a, uh, with, a, uh, with a hood cuisine, you know, a chef who wants to make a special, um, a special uh, five course meal, meal uh, and receive later on uh, the Michelin star for it uses better ingredients, ingredients. Yeah. and, more and time uh, that's and the more same patience. for printing. It's yes, all yes, about yes. material and know-how. And I also know you were quite about scents, like, and I totally agree on that matter. How? Because you say the color needs to be tested on the paper, and not just how it looks and feels, but the smell of it. Why would you want to look at something for hours if it doesn't smell right? So I, you compare yourself sometimes to a parfumeur, and I completely understand that. I wouldn't want to read a book that stinks basically, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you know, uh, that was also something I learned from Lagerfeld. When he created a, new f created a new fragrance, he was working very close with the parfumeur. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm, I, I learned from him and I'm working inside my publishing and print house like a parfumeur with my offset inks on paper. So I try out which kind of ink, I have my own inks produced with a German uh, factory, uh, Jennecke and Schneemann, okay. um, where I don't use trade inks, those are special products. And then I find out, okay, on this paper, when I use this ink in combination with a certain oil-based varnish, vegetable oils, mm -hmm. not uh, petrochemical oils, which are also produce for us exclusively, then it creates a certain uh, sense uh, and smell. And uh, then I create my top note, uh, my oh. base note and the long lasting notes. We did a, a, a fragrance uh, years ago with Karl Lagerfeld. The name of the uh, fragrance was Paper Passion. Oh, and wow. it was okay. a smell of a publishing house and print house. Paper Beautiful. Paper I would passion. love to come and smell or see the process of your wonderful endeavor that you've created over almost half a century, you could say now. Um, I would love to see that process. It's quite fascinating. I just went and visited Hahnemühle and I'm so impressed with the machines, the precision. There's a lot of handwork still going in, but yeah. those ancient, ancient not, but uh, what was it? 17, 1871, 1871. A drying cylinder of one machine is from 1871. But the, it's it's you travel through centuries. That's yeah. when I show the machines. You have at the dry at the wet end. You have leading edge technology with re regulation compute techniques and very clean uh, pipes and and cutting systems. And then you go through uh, through hundreds of years until the the hot end, uh, the dry end comes with the drying cylinders and then um, it's amazing how over 200 years literally was uh, basically the machines optimized um, and there's a living subject uh, basically. The machines are uh, yes. human beings yeah, to some extent. Soul. So. You really feel the soul, you know. So you feel the soul so, and you, you feel yes. how many generations went through it, you know. Yeah. You, feel, you feel the souls of the generations going through uh, our production. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And also with the water and also yes. vegan, I mean you mentioned Non, non, non animal Animals. act uh, stuff, and we are using uh, also since 1965 vegan binding material for which you need for also the paper production. And also, we have lots of natural line paper, so we are in an environmentally protected area. We borrow the water, we borrow the water and use it uh, for production, but we give it back to nature in a very clean and even a cleaner situation than it came in. I so it's, you, you see it, yeah. you, and it's it's pretty amazing. We are probably one of the only or the only paper machine paper manufacturer who is not using water. Water. Yeah, with that quality, and then in the nature reserve, same source, 440 years. And I went. You showed me the source, and I stood, and I'm like, yeah, nature is happy here. There was still a good calmness, and the birds, and everything was like, this is real. This is so impressive because these days, you know. Marketing does the job, but then there's a few real truthful, iconic brands and I'm sitting next to you and working with Hanamila is just very, very beautiful situation. Now, when you talk about the process of, you know, first the idea, someone sending the idea to making, to saying, okay, I want to do this, I like this, choosing 
the whole process, what would be your favorite in the process from the beginning to the end of seeing it bound and in your hands? What's the most exciting <laughs> part for you? My, my favorite is um, truly the wet proof printing. You know, wet proof printing means uh, once uh, the idea for the book is born, the layout is made, um, the images in the book, the photos are processed in, by in Photoshop uh, for the printing process, uh, then um, it is uh, essential that you have to go before printing the book on press, on the real press, with the real offset inks and on the real paper to make test prints and to try out which paper is the best. So I prepare uh, in the press room five or six pallets with paper, not just 100 sheets, you know, really 3,000, 4,000 sheets to make the real production. And then with the same forms, we go on this paper, that paper and so on. And then together with the artist, we look what is the best paper uh, for your book. And uh, so uh, our, our book production is not a standard at all. It is an experiment and an adventure with an open end. We don't know where it ends before we have made wet proof printing. And this ritual is uh, something unique. You don't find it anymore in other publishing houses because it's too expensive. Uh, but uh, we are doing it because it makes better books. And the outcome is an, is uh, exciting because it can vary as what you, what you would expect. Yeah. Like it could completely different, yeah. be something else. So yeah, and uh, some also, surprises. Uh, this is a kind of lab process uh, where we and I especially um, can learn a lot, yeah, and the experience from the previous book leads into a better book production for the next one. Yeah? And that's an ongoing process which is never stopping. And you never mm -hmm. stop learning yeah. and mm -hmm. experimenting. Yeah. Beautiful job. So, we're just going into that technical aspect. Like in the last years, or in the last decade, Artificial, artificial intelligence has now come into the game more and more. How has that influenced like your media, the, the, the high, super high quality photo book printing? Do you use it? Do you say no? Do you, how, do you, how do you work with that? Uh, you, you know, in photo processing, uh, it is quite useful. For example, for us, the analog photography is uh, still a big deal. Yeah? So digitizing negatives uh, is a couple of hundred hours for us uh, in a, a month. Yeah? And, um, and uh, uh, these old negatives are 50 years old, 70 years old, and they are quite dirty. And intelli in, uh, artificial intelligence helps a lot uh, to clean it out, yeah. Uh, but, um, for example, uh, you, you have to control it, yeah. yeah. Uh, we found out that uh, this technique is not clever enough to understand that there is on a wire, a wire runs, an electric wire runs through the photo, and there is a bird sitting mm -hmm. on, yeah. Oh. And, AI deletes it as oh. a as a uh, um, as a default. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so uh, what I want to say is, it is helpful up to a certain point, and then the final decision has to be made by human beings. So used in the right doses with the human brain always watching out. <laughs> I did um, recently a photo book with an American photographer, Langdon Clay. Uh, the title is the book uh, New York uh, 42nd Street yeah. and uh, he photographed 42nd Street first time in the 1970s then in the uh, 1980s 1990s and now in the 20s and um, the street is permanently changing getting more commercial yeah. Yeah, more uh, billboards more advertising and then uh, he had the clever idea uh, to to ask um, artificial intelligence 
to show us how 42nd Street looks in oh. 2030. And how it would like in And 30. we get a result and surprisingly it is what? Just billboards. You can't see any more houses at all. You see just billboards. And I think that's uh, this will be fulfilled for sure. Yeah, what, uh, about, because <laughs> what about people? Probably you will no, use people no people, no huh? cars, no. just billboards. Just so billboards. Mm. Any yeah. instruments flying? <laughs> And uh, uh, that, you know, that is also an example uh, where you have to say if there is not a city government which stops this nonsense uh, and uh, makes rules that uh, a city lives by the architecture and not by billboards, that has to be decided by human beings. And uh, in our business of making books and printing and going onto paper, it is just the same. At a certain point you have to say stop this shit and we make it with our hands, with our human our brain. brain. Yeah. Keep, keep the humans, yeah, I don't know, it's, that's scary kind of, yeah, the path it's going now, if you look at the inner cities, is scary also for the businesses and for human nature, like, you know, but yeah, that we will maybe see some of the changes still. And how is it that you as a first non-photographer, now that we're talking about art and photographers and how you wanted to be a photographer and then said to yourself, no, I'm very honest to myself, this is just secondary, the big stars are going to be the big stars. But you did win the Sony Photo World Award in 2020 as a first non-photographer. Congratulations. How funny is that one? It's really funny uh, because, <laughs> um, uh, it, uh, you know, at the end I was really proud uh, about this award uh, because it means uh, that the helping hand, the technician, in the process of delivering photography which has been created by the photographer, a human being, via the camera and a lens onto a screen or onto paper. At this stage I would say it doesn't matter for the moment if it is a screen or uh, the or, or if it is paper um, but it needs persons in between who makes it right for the certain media digital or analog and I'm the analog person and uh, that uh, the reason that an analog person a printer receives this award was that photographers need printers and need papers and need paper factories and need inks to release their work and uh, that this was by Sony uh, award respected uh, makes me proud. Yes, I can imagine that and you know how things come around when you do things with a passion and with a heart and it's with a lot of truth then you get awarded you know that's beautiful I, I think it's just wonderful. Now we're sitting here at the Hannemüller um, booth and um, I've heard you speak about papers a little bit before and also mentioning Lana, that you say from time to time you use Lana, ma Lana papers. Is there other um, sustainable papers that you think that have the quality for your type of book, photo book printing? <laughs> Um, there is one product at Hahnemühle, what is called Bugra Button, and uh, that has been produced, I believe, at least for, for 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a very long standing product. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm using it since the 1970s to wow. wrap our literature books into this paper. So uh, we call it cover over board, paper over board. Yeah? And uh, the beauty of this paper, for example, is uh, that by aging or using the book, yeah, when it gets little schmutz or uh, the edges are yeah. deformed, it's getting even more beauty. Yeah? And there are only a few papers in the world who delivers this experience, that the aging process of the paper and the print on top makes it more beauty as when it is fresh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, cool. it, it, it's, it tells more of the story than the life of the book. Gives it the soul of the book, the cover, the binding. Um, yeah, I get goosebumps to be honest when you talk about it. And I'd love to visit the site to also, yeah, see the process and, and see you at work, really. Um, Hannemüller Hybrid Hemp. Have you ever worked with Hybrid Hemp? No. Um, I, <laughs> but 
Uh, is there something I, that's interesting yeah, to you? Yeah, it or? is absolutely interesting. Yeah, uh, sure just by accident, uh, I saw a book uh, here which was printed in a test edition of three. And um, uh, I flipped through the pages and uh, it is hemp, what I learned right an hour, right now, an hour ago, uh, has a wonderful surface. Uh, the opacity is uh, brilliant and surprisingly when you hold the books in your hand uh, this book uh, this photo book had approximately 160 pages um, it has no weight yeah i just we were just in the other interview you were handing the book and and ralf schultz the photographer said that's very light considering yeah, yeah, it, other books it occurred to us that it's really uh, from uh, the weight perspective also benefits but that's a side a byproduct we didn't intend but that's great uh, so it's fantastic but you know since uh, corona i'm ex making experiments uh, with finding the new book for the time after corona yeah so uh, traveling is more complicated traveling is more expensive to buy a flight ticket yeah. costs a fortune today yeah, yeah. but people still want to be global and I want that they buy books when they go to an exhibition but nobody wants to schlep anymore a, a five or six kilo museum book uh, from the Metropolitan Museum back home to Tokyo and uh, so I'm, I'm doing experiments with low weight papers and uh, one which is on my radar right now is the hemp paper yeah um, and uh, making low weight books, makes them a little smaller, makes them a little bit more human. Uh, that's the future of making books. Yes. And I think hemp is the perfect paper for my ideas. I will try it out. Thank I you. Promise. That's great. Absolutely. Also, you were mentioning um, the pineapple green. The stem of a pineapple might be the next new thing on uh, the sustainable just, market. In, indeed, uh, we had just uh, the TV station and NDR, NDR was with us, and uh, they, uh, also University of Hannover, uh, they are working with um, Puerto Rico on, on uh, pineapple, on pineapple, uh, let's say, waste, and to use the pineapple waste for cellulose. Mm -hmm. And, and there's, they have big issues in Puerto Rico with the, af, after the harvest of the pineapples, they cut off the, the, the trunk and then basically leave it. And they have really big issues that it composts itself. So, uh, and that causes a lot of issues. And so they want to use that to ch generate a natural cellulose material, which you can use as a natural lime product. So we've got a experience uh, on the way and uh, pineapple might be another be natural lime product. And then people will ask, of course, okay, is it sustainable to get from Puerto Rico uh, the uh, cellulose material? And the TV station and the scientists in Hannover University did that calculation that they say clearly yes. It's a clear yes, it's a lot more sustainable than have it, uh, have big issues in Puerto Rico with all of the, all of the residuals of the pineapple plant. It's similar to the other um, material like hemp. Hemp is a fantastic raw material, it grows in one, one year and a tree requires 20 years and requires a lot more um, water to, to grow. And so it's a tree free. I also like that expression to, to set and make a little bit of difference in terms of really uh, preserving also uh, forests and so on. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it's been a short, intense, lovely talk filled with lovely information. Is there anything that you'd like to a wish for the coming years that you'd like to maybe send to the universe that you'd like to maybe experience? Um, with a Korean fashion brand, we created um, right now a series of uh, garments which is called uh, Steidel Workwear with uh, This Is Never That. That's a fashion brand. And Steidel Workwear, that's uh, my lab coat, it, it, it is a jacket, uh, it is a t-shirt, and it's a messenger bag and uh, pants. And uh, the, the light motif, the motto on all the garments is um, long live offset. Long live offset, long fantastic. Live offset. <laughs> yeah, we are here at the offset uh, printing hall of Königenbauer. We have here some offset samples here also printed on uncoated papers and uh, it's gonna gonna make it. Uh, with the yeah. ink, uh, inks. Uh, he mentioned the inks. Very important. Uh, the pigments need to be natural. Yeah. And they need to have high quality. And the way he uh, works with his ink supplier, um, it's it's pretty amazing. As I'm coming from the print industry as well, I'm not really a paper maker. I'm I'm learning. 
I'm in year number six at the Hane Mühle, but I'm also from the printing industry and looking at analog to offset, uh, analog to digital transformation. And, 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 and uh, there's so much innovation in offset and in, in digital, so both coexist. And uh, the good news is we have since 440 years on analog paper for offset, since 440 years and since 25 years for the digital side of the house. So long live and, offsetting, um, yeah. Also, uh, I really believe that offset printing by today, it's on its peak. It will never be better yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah, and the uh, building offset presses of the size we need, uh, there is not really a market anymore for this yeah. high quality pro yeah, processes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but okay, if you buy today an offset press, uh, which delivers the best results, uh, you can be sure that there is around the globe a handful of paper makers who delivers the right paper to make this high quality books as I have in mind. So my future is offset printing and uh, this handful of paper mills like Hahnemühle who delivers my raw material uh, to make fine art books. Wonderful. Fantastic. It's been a great pleasure having you here and I would love to dive into more information and stories that you hold in so many years of experience. Thank you so much, Gerd Steidl. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Mr. Steidl. Learned a lot and it was a pleasure and honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Danny.